Hey guys, it's the Addy Queen, and in this video, I'm going to be making a little baby bonnet. This is one that I made in the past on my channel, and as you can see, I made it on a knitting machine that did not have as many pegs. What I did was I did a flat panel, and then I sewed it together on the top here, and did some crochet in the front. And this is a really cute pattern. It was simple. But I didn't really like the way my join looked on the inside. There was definitely room for improvement. Uh, I got on YouTube and Angie and Britt had a pattern. I thought it was so cute. So I'm going to be trying my rendition of their pattern and kind of comparing it to what my bonnet looks like when we are through. So to begin, you're going to need a knitting machine that has at least 40 pegs. So your Centro 48, you're gonna need the Addy King um, and Innovations, any of those. And we are gonna cast on with waste yarn. And we are casting on 40 stitches. So I started on the third peg, so I'm gonna go until I'm at the 43rd peg. Forty two, forty three. Now with plain knitting, it's very important that you get underneath this tooth here or it will drop your last stitch and not count. All right, in front, behind, there we go. And press this down. There we are. I always go pretty slow the first couple rounds. So I'm just gonna do one more row of my waste yarn because I want um, to end where I began. Where I positioned this project on my loom, you will notice it does not trigger the row counter. Using the Centro, the row counter is okay, but with plain knitting, um, it usually counts double the rows that you have done. So I'm not crazy about using the row counter. That aside, the Centro row counter is not always the most dependable. And just to stay consistent, I like to count the rows myself when I'm doing a shorter project like this. In this video, I'm using Yarn B um, by Hobby Lobby Studio 72 in the color Clay, which is a very interesting name because it's more of like a coral, I think. So you're going to begin. We are leaving quite a tail in here because we will be doing some crochet to this project. And I'm just starting right here to the right of my first needle, making sure it goes under the hook. We're just going really slow. I guess I probably should have chosen a different color on the camera. It looks really similar to the color of the pigs. We're going past this tooth. Oh, make sure it goes under. And see as it comes around it'll come off of there that's a very important step now I'm gonna put this in the bottom hole of my tensioner still going very slow just it's good to be cautious. Oh, I have a knot. I hate when you buy yarn new in the skein and there's a knot like halfway through, especially when I'm working on crochet. There we go. I'll get that between the pegs. So frustrating. You would think that with how much they charge for yarn, they'd be like, okay. I'm going to be so careful and I'm going to make this one long strand so they don't have any knots that are unnecessary. No, they do not care. <laughs> so 
Some people like to use a weight. Sometimes I just push this down to make sure that all the stitches catch. Again, going really slow towards the beginning here because I want everything to pick up and look nice. You know, sometimes making a mistake when you're knitting in the round or making a tube, you can hide it better. But with panel knitting, all your work's kind of out there for the world to see. So it's nice to take the extra time to make sure everything looks nice and neat. So we are continuing on with the rest of our project. If you are using your row counter, you're going to go until you reach 14 on the row counter. If you're counting your rows like I am, you're going to go until you reach 28. Because I'm counting ending here as a row and ending here as a row. So it just depends on how you count it. But either way, it should be 28 stitches from each peg. I have just reached the end of my 28 rows, so I'm going to take my yarn out of the feeder. And again, we're leaving a decently long tail. In this pattern, this tail is actually going to become part of the string that you use to tie on the bonnet. And just like with any project that we take off with a needle, we are going to run this through without any yarn in the feeder. I've grabbed my yarn needle and we're going to get this long tail out of here. And we're just going to take all of these off. Nothing too crazy. And sometimes, I don't know, especially when I use my Centro, I do this. I like to rotate the whole machine when I'm taking it off instead of doing the crank. I just, I don't know. I guess it's because I like to take the yarn off with my right hand. Like hold the needle in my right hand. I don't want to have to try to crank. I don't want to have to try to use my left hand to cast off. Because I feel like that would kind of be a disaster. <laughs> We're just pulling this yarn through as we go. Don't want to forget that last stitch there. We'll get this pesky knitting machine out of the way and then we will be finishing our bonnet. So as you can see where I cinched this, this is not going to lay exactly straight. See it's going like that. The way that this pattern is made is that the back is cinched together. Your baby's neck is going to go here. And this is a space that goes around its head. So, to begin, I'm going to crochet so we are ready to take off our waist yarn. You don't have to use any specific size crochet hook for this. I just grabbed a small one and it happens to be an F or a 3.75 millimeter. We're going to go on the end with our yarn. We're going to go in the first loop and the second loop. Pull through. We're gonna take our waist yarn here, not our waist yarn, from our cast on, our tail, yarn over, pull through. We're gonna take the loop, yarn over, pull through. The next stitch, yarn over, pull both of them through. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on this, that way you can see a little better what I'm doing. This is our tail. 
we go in the stitch, yarn over with the tail, pull both of them through. Next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Oh, I'm gonna scrap the waist yarn there. Yarn over, pull them both through. And we're gonna continue this for all of the stitches until we get to the end here. Just repeating the same stitch. We're almost to the end here. I just have a couple more stitches. It's our last one. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to take the rest of that tail and to make a knot I'm just going to put it through my hook, pull through, put it through my hook again, and then pull it all the way through. That makes a nice snug little knot that will not pull out. Now I'm just folding this in half and we're taking out our waist yarn. I have found when you're removing waist yarn from the cast on, it's easier to pull your tail because it tightens up the part of the yarn that you pull out to make it unravel. I don't know, might not be the best way to do it, but that's my method. It makes your waist yarn unravel a lot easier. Let's see, where's that last stitch? There it is. So by pulling this through, we took out the things that's anchoring these, the, these rows together. So now I can just pull and it unravels. So we're going to fully remove our waste yarn. Alright, now that the waste yarn has been removed, we are ready to move to what's going to be the back of our bonnet. This is where... We cast it off and things are kind of cinched up. So I'm moving this tail from the front over here for now. And I am going to cinch this up more. And we're going to fold it in half because you want to make sure things are even. What we're going to do with our cinched up part is we're going to sew it together. But where this kind of starts to curve over, you're not going to sew because that's going to be where the baby's neck goes. So we're going to pull this tight. And then we're just going to sew the cinched part to itself. All right, so this is what we're kind of working with here. I am going to go ahead and tie a knot to hold this in place.
And we're gonna tuck our tail in here. And I'm going to cut. Now, you'll notice with my bonnet I made previously, I did a crochet thing to hold it together. Angie and Britt and their pattern kept the yarn. So to stay true to their pattern, I am going to use a piece of yarn that I had trimmed. I'm just going to use my crochet hook here to pull it through. I'm going to tie a little knot to hold it on. I'm going to cut this excess. I'm going to lay this flat and trim to where these two are even. So I'm going to pull them both tight and trim about there. Now we're going to grab my model. You can't make fun of her. It is ugly, creepy baby that has bad hair. That's my model. <laughs> so first we're going to put on the bonnet that we just made. Oh, it has waste yarn all over it. Move creepy baby's hand. And we're going to tie at the bottom. And just make a little bow. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> there we are. I like their crochet join here around the edge a lot better than the pattern I previously used. Not too crazy about the way this cinch looks in the back, but I do like the top of the head. Scoot that forward. It fits nicely around the neck. Looks good from the front. I do like it. I like their pattern. It's definitely a lot easier to join. It's quicker and it works very well. Now I'm going to put my bonnet on there. This was the one that I joined on the top. And instead of the ties just being attached at the corners, Mine actually cinches up the back of the bonnet. So I ran my crochet thread through. So here is my bonnet. I will admit it looks a lot sloppier on the inside, but I do enjoy the cinch. We'll put it on Creepy Baby with bad hair and we'll cinch her up. I do think I enjoy having the crochet for the bottom of the bonnet better. Just have something thicker. It makes it a little easier to tie. As for the border here, I do like the one from the Angie and Britt pattern better. It just seems to fit more. You know what I mean? Looking at the back, it does look kind of puckered here, but that's from where we cinched it up to fit the head. But you will notice that there is kind of a gap up here. That's just from the way it was joined. So we'll flip this thing around. On the top of the baby's head, that's where it was sewed together. Overall, I do recommend their pattern. I will link their video down in the description. It was a cute, quick beanie, and you can probably cinch this better than I did, honestly. Um, I don't know. I got it decently, but it wasn't the best. I'll admit to that. And... I do like, on mine you're able to cinch through here, but I'm sure if you wanted to, you could add your own cinch. Uh, in the description, I will link the tutorial for this bonnet and Angie and Britt's tutorial. I hope that this was helpful to you guys, and happy crafting everyone.